if they see the banks or if they see the financial institution as part of the state, then th that's another reason why they would not oppose it. Do you get me? In, in terms of like, they don't want to disrupt the state or the status quo and how this can be seen as potentially going against like the people in charge and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, you know why? And that's because we as Muslims over the past couple of decades have become very statist, meaning we've grown to believe that the state or the government is in charge of everything. Mm. Whereas in reality, if you look at historic history, that's not been the case. The government's only been in charge of some things, not everything. I mean, just, just ask yourself a question. When did we start getting police? Mm. I mean, a simple thing as we take for granted, the police or the ambulance. I mean, as in, they weren't always there. Do you, have you ever come mm. across the hadith where the Sahaba called the police? Or the Tabi'in called the police? So then mm. how did they deal with crime back in the day? As in, we all took responsibility for what's around us. War in the good, we in the evil. There was no police because everyone was police. Everyone was involved in the, in the running of the country. Everyone was part of the state. The government only did some things, not everything. Mm. Now we got to a state whereby we seem to think that the government must do everything. You know, every single thing that the government, everything we want to blame. Why doesn't the government do this? Why doesn't the government do that? What do you mean the government? What happened to you? Do you, think, do, you think, do you think the government must do everything? What happened to you? Are you not involved? Are you not part of the state, part of the, part of the, the, the government, part of the system? And this is what I'm saying. It's, it's a, it's a bottom-up approach. Islam only deals... The, 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 if, you, if, I, if I actually show you the book of... You, you find that the part to do with judicial law, to do with government, is a small, tiny section of the whole book of fiqh. The rest of it is what we do. Our salah, our zakah, our business transactions, our marriages, our divorces. What we do as amongst ourselves, the government is a small, tiny section of, of interaction. Most of it is they're, they're not involved. But now, fast forward to our year, all of a sudden, all of a sudden the government's in, cho in charge of this, and the government's in charge of yeah. the money, and the government's in charge of interest rates, the government's in charge of this. But that's not how it always used to be. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm talking so romantic as in, in the old days, we should go back to this. I don't know, maybe things have changed. Maybe government, government needs to have more, more of a role. Who knows? But what I'm saying is that, um, um, those who feel that whatever the government says we must do, I think they've misunderstood uh, the role of government. If, 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 if a Khalifa says to you, hop on one leg, it, what, you must hop on one leg for how long? At what, at what stage you must do it now? You know what I'm saying? There, there are certain things which the government is in charge of, I mean, we listen to obey them, but it's not everything. It's not mm. every single thing you must do, listen, on, listen and obey. And, and mm. that's ridiculous to, to assume that. But like I said, um, Unfortunately, I think we think uh, people have um, have taken uh, what's the word? We've become a bit communist in our in our in our view, or very socialist in our view. We've adopted mm. a lot of social views that somehow the government's in charge of every single thing. That's that's not how it is. Mm. There's actually a lot it of things the government shouldn't get involved in, i.e., the markets. That's another one. Jazakallah mm. khair. Uh, can you just touch on the central digital currency issue? If that is an issue in your eyes. Oh, the new CBDCs, you mean? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I, I didn't get, get in the point of initial question. So, yeah, so a CBDC, uh, a central digital, centralized digital, central CBDC, central bank digital currency. That's what it is. So, it's a, a basically mm. digital currency issued by the central banks. So, essentially, the way money works right now is that central banks are supposed to be in charge of the issuance of currency. In reality, Money that we have in our hands is 99.9% .9 from the high street banks, not from central banks. Central banks are only in charge of a small fraction of money. Most money is made through money lending and mortgages and the rest of it. So mm -hmm. with the invent, advent of a CBDC, essentially what that means is that money issuance now comes from the central bank directly, circumventing the high street banks. So the high street banks won't be the issuers, the issuers of money. It will be the central bank's digital currency. And... Um, and uh, it is what it is. I mean, some people are, are against it. Some people see there's benefit to it. I think the reality is that money, money is an emergent property. And what governments try to do is try to control this emergent property. They try to have a monopoly over something which there is no monopoly. As in, mankind decided to use gold. Gold was never enforced on people. Mankind decided to use shells. It was never enforced on people. So I think if given the choice, if mankind is given the choice between Bitcoin, and a CBDC, 
Some would use a CBDC and some would use Bitcoin, but over time, people will just see that Bitcoin is so much more better than a CBDC. So they can, they can, they can launch it if they wanted to. I don't really mm. see anything wrong with it. The only way a CBDC will have success is by the sword. If governments mm. take a knife to your neck and say, you must use our currency, that's the only way they can force you to use it because people won't use it normally. They won't, people will not naturally normally use a controlled government coin mm. that, that, that actually dictates how you can even spend your money. Yeah, I mean, exactly. this, this makes sense. Here's money I can spend when I want. Here's money that the government's watching me how I spend. Who's gonna, what are you going to choose? Mm. Here's so one money which is limited control. to supply. Here's the money that they could print to infinity when they want to. I mean, it's just, it's just a no-brainer. They, they're going to lose. So I don't, I, it doesn't concern me. Mm. The only thing it concerns is those who choose to stay in countries like UK or Canada yeah. or America, when they decide to bring down the hammer, then, you know, it's up to you. But I think those who, who, who have followed my advice of today, who have decided to try and live within their means, and those, those, those who try to build their savings, when these CBDCs come into play and when they start to see the authoritarian nature of, these, of this currency, they will make the decision themselves to leave this country. And by that time, the CBDC won't bother them. But just prepare yourself for that move when it comes because you're going to have to prepare yourself. You can't avoid it. Mm. You've got, at some point, you're going to have, a, you have to make a decision. Do I want to stay in mm. a society where this is the reality or do I want to go to a better place? And I think mm. that's, that, that's what's going to we, We've seen it now already. Look at the NHS, how it's going downhill. The N I'll be honest, brother. Most people you speak to, the one thing that is keeping them in this country beyond family is what? The NHS. NHS. Once that's completely gone, the reason to be here is gone. Beyond benefits and family. So, you know, mm. I think basically they're, they're only making the case for you to leave even more stronger.